What's up guys, thanks for coming back for another video. If you've been here before, thank you for coming back. If this is your first ever video, wow. Thank you for being here, I really appreciate it. This is a channel where we just kind of beat on a bunch of stuff, try to bring it back to life. So thank you everybody for watching this, for joining me on this video. Our victim today, victim I use lightly, this is a, this is a John Deere I think it's a maybe mid to late 90s, something like that. Uh, it's a John Deere walk behind mower. I wouldn't consider it a commercial mower, but uh, this is from a, I did another video. It was an Aaron's walk behind mower. I'll link that in the description. Um, the guy who ended up buying it from me, uh, his name is Fred, awesome guy. He was a retired police officer. And when I met him to sell it, not this one, the other one. He, uh, you know, we bantered back and forth, talked back and forth a little bit. And he said, oh man, I, I wish I would have known that you work on this stuff. I would have brought this one with me. So, you know, we, we exchanged numbers and, you know, we ended up connecting and I got this one from him. So uh, we're going to see what's going on with it. He really loves the mower and not too much story behind it. I don't think I really need any. He just said it probably just needs some kind of a fuel a fuel clean out it sat for a little bit and now it is in a currently in a non running state not a speck of rust on it there's a couple teeny spots that you can't really see within with the unless i point them out where the paint's chipping but i mean it is just beautiful condition i believe it's a briggs and stratton six horsepower it says up there six horsepower i think it's a briggs and stratton it doesn't say on it Five speed, let's see. Yeah, I see on there, 1998. It's a John Deere JA65. It's really cool. I, I love in these little push mowers when the, uh, when the blade assembly runs independent of the motor, you know, and that locks down. And then the mower, the mower can stay running while the blades are engaged or disengaged. Um, looks like it's got five speeds. There's a throttle control. So I'm going to go through my normal. I'm just going to pretend not that I know much about it anyways, but I'm going to go through my normal diagnosis on it and we'll check for spark. You know, we'll see. Uh, I, I don't, I'm kind of debating whether or not I want to dump some fuel in there just to see, I, you know, I, I, I believe him. It, is a good engine and likely it just needs a carburetor cleaned out and might bust out the ultrasonic cleaner for the first time ever in my life on this one depending on how bad it is if it's not that bad i might maybe keep it going here here it is down there it's still got the film on top anyways so first things first i'm gonna stop rambling i'm gonna get you guys set up and we will check to see if there's a uh check to see if we got some spark going on All right, I'll cut the lights off. Little orange flicker in there. If we got the, if we got the spark. You guys are gonna have to tell me if it, if you see it, because I can't see it. Hmm. So it does not look like we have a spark. Yeah, so we we do not have spark. Spark plug looks really good. Not that that means a ton. We're off to a horrible start. So it is not just a fuel issue. I mean, it might be a fuel issue, but there's definitely more going on to it than that. Uh, first thing I want to do, I, I want to get this shroud off and then we, uh, we'll cut into that. Maybe there's some kind of a magneto gap issue or who knows. Let's, uh, let's take a look. All right. So before I do all that, I do have another plug before I get all that ripped off. We'll see if that new plug, I don't know too much about this plug. I pulled it off another thing. It doesn't look too bad, but, uh, we'll, we'll just check that first. It's an easy check. One thing that I Jumped the gun a little bit. A couple of you might be wondering. I did not check the oil. 
and just take a look and see what that looks like. Yeah, it looks just fine. Again, this is not this is not something that I have really any money into, so I'm not. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna take his word for it. Gas tank looks very empty, and it does not smell bad at all. So it actually, I don't think that fuel has anything to do with it. The more, the further I get into uh, diagnosing this. So let's get that other spark plug on there. Let's just. Let's just see what that does. Ooh. If any of you know old fuel, there it's hard to explain. The bottom of that, see how it's like a gold-ish color? Should be that color, like a silver. So that is just old sticky gummy fuel. I'll just shove that one back in. It might actually, I wouldn't be surprised if this was the case if it fired right up. Let's put that spark checker back on there. We'll see what that gives us. See what that shows. Orange flicker right in that cylinder. Okay, it's so ruled out spot. I mean, there. I guess there is a chance that that spark plug could be bad too, but the likelihood of that is very low. So we'll just pretend like that's a good spark plug, and we will pretend like that one is a good spark plug. All right, let's get this shroud off first thing. Next, it looks like this fuel tank wraps around this one piece. This circle thing around the recoil is the fuel tank. It's held on by one, two, three bolts, three eights maybe. This is not three eights. It is in fact five sixteenths. We got one more. 10 bucks is a different bolt size. <laughs> it is a 3 8. Oh, why do they do that? I, I wonder why. I've seen that before on a couple of Craftsmen. The ones on top are a little bit smaller and then there's a bolt on the side that holds that shroud that's one size bigger. Why? Why? I'm sure there's an explanation. I just don't know what it is. It's usually a spacer. Yep, a little spacer. Okay. I'm gonna leave that recoil on. It looks like we got one, two. Looks like there's a throttle cable right here too. It's the flathead screwdriver, I hope. Mm -hmm. Put a little piece of paper towel in that uh, in that oil hole, just for safe measure. This just should come right up and off. It's getting caught on something. So this spark issue, it might be, so I know there's safeties where the bail lever on top has to be down in order for it to have spark. It'll ground out. There'll be some kind of a kill switch or something. They're all relatively similar, a little bit different. This, while these can go bad, I just have an index card that I fold in half. I just want to check the gap just from my visual eye. It doesn't look like it. Mm. Actually, might be a little bit too tight. Mm. 
Yeah, that gap might just be a little too tight. Let's get this guy off. And I think that's a quarter, of course. If there's a kill switch, which there's not on this, the kill switch is just to let off the, the brake bail, there will be a, a post on here in the wiring system that will that will key or plug into it. And when that grounds out, it closes the circuit and that's what shuts the engine off. It kills the spark to it. Get that cleaned up a little bit. There should be here, let me, let me see here. I'm gonna get you guys up here. Okay, please forgive this massive mess on here. I'll try to get it to where you guys only see the clean, well, kind of clean spot. This is just ingrained in here. Let's get that. There's just a lot of dirt just caked in here. Let's see if it shows up. There's a lot of dirt just caked in there. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I don't know if it's, this might be the problem solve. Just gonna knock that off. Okay, got that cleaned up a little bit. Uh, I actually think I might have one of these. I'm not 100% sure, but it's either this or it's something to do with the, the wire. Well, no, I don't think it had to do with the wire because that has more to do with the, the, the kill portion of it. And this makes it start, the other one makes it stop. So it's got to be this. So it's either it, it had a gap issue, which it might have been a little bit too close. This part is bad or it had something to do with that cake that we just got off of there. So I, I want to, I want to say, I think there should be continuity yeah so all I'm doing so there is continuity between the post or no there's not yeah so there's continuity between the post and the um, you know the the body of it so there should not be continuity between this wire that goes on the plug and the body, and there's not. Continuity throughout the body, that's fine. I'm gonna check to see what that other wire is doing. That you can see, right? Continuity, no continuity. So if I can get you, here, I'll try to get you in. And here, show you what I'm looking at. Okay, so that wire, that wire comes down up through here, and it's attached to that guy right there, which is that piece in that hole, and this are one. And that wire, you see I'm jiggling the wire and it's moving those two pieces. When this throttle comes over it, it'll ground, right? It'll ground out. And it appears that that is making a good connection. It's clearly grounding. So looking at this, what all that means is this throttle cable, as you can see, there's the bunny, there's the turtle, and all the way at the end, that's the kill switch. So when you go down all the way at the bottom, that's when that little arm swings over and it hits that post and it'll kill the spark. So that goes in the plug, and then we'll just ground this to the engine. And this one right there should change to a different, just some random series of numbers. Yeah, okay. All right, so that works. Not that that was the issue in the first place. You know what, let's just hope that it either was the gap or just cleaning some of that crud off of the armature face. And uh, we'll get this button back up and we'll see. And if not, the only other thing it could be is 
that that piece there's just a failure in that spark plug module you know magneto and that will likely be the fix needed this looks like a common engine this is a briggs engine that i think there's still many parts available for so it shouldn't be a problem and uh yeah but let's hope that's not it that would be really awesome if it was just that one thing so let's get this button back up and we'll see if we get some spark all right i get this guy all buttoned back up let's get this plug it's inline spark tool it's my favorite tool by the way let's get that put back on there and let us cross our fingers and we will see if what we did was the problem i'm gonna shut the light off once again orange flicker hopefully i should probably stop saying that it's a jinx effect all right here we go orange flicker come on orange oh it was on the it was on the kill all right really orange ah oh, come on come on let's see hold on hold on hold on hold on okay where's that spark where is that spark all right we got a little bit more work to do okay so i have good news and bad news the bad news is is that i thought i had the exact same one which i don't the good news is is i think so this came off a Briggs engine that was a different size horsepower, but it was basically the same, uh, it was the same style, the same setup, all the same. Um, it might've just been slightly different. So anyways, I, I don't know, I, this should have the bandwidth to keep up with the demand. And I believe this one is good, I think. Actually, I don't know. You know what? This one is unknown, but it's better than a bad one. So this is plan B. We're gonna put this one on, see if that maybe brings us to spark back. And then plan C, we are just going to maybe look at a, uh, a new one, a new part. So I'm gonna get the other one off and we'll look at this one side by side and just kind of make sure that it's, that it, uh, make sure that it checks out. Hopefully we get that spark back. All right guys, bad news to report. Unfortunately, this is the one that was originally on it. This is the one that I thought would fit. Those mounting points are a little bit different. If you can see, it's it's identical, but this this one on the left, you can see, is a little bit more forward than the one on the right. And there's a little room for adjustment, but there's not enough room to, to jam this one all the way forward or all the way back where it needs to go. There's just not, there's very little margin. So I am going to do a little bit of investigation to figure out where and how I can find one of these and that should be the fix hopefully it's you know only a few bucks and we'll get that put on there in however long it can get here let me take a look and I'll cut the camera on a few days later when we can figure out how the heck this one's gonna finish later for now guys see you in a sec okay it is the next night I have an update and I did not order a new one yet I wanted to try something first. The clone version of this is like 15 bucks. You know, there's probably nothing wrong with the clone. Personally, not really a huge fan of clone non-OEM parts. So I know some people have really good success with them. I'm just, you know, not particularly a huge fan. Nothing against them. I just, it doesn't, OEM just feels right to me. So I went to a local salvage yard that takes in tractors and used power equipment. I, this is the only problem. The model number is put on the shroud cover of most engines. Sometimes it's on the muffler. It's all in different, couple different places. This piece did not have a model number on it. So I was unable to confirm. I held it up side by side. And just like I did yesterday, the holes match up perfectly. So, and, and so I think it's going to be the right piece also the other one that I had that didn't match, it came from a different horsepower, different, whole different, I think it came from a little edger. This was on an actual push mower with a, it had the same muffler, it had the same, you know, setup, it had the same breather tube, it looked identical. So I'm just gonna hope that this is the same piece. I don't know if it works, but it was $2. So I figured it was worth a shot first before we either go the clone or the OEM route. The OEM piece was like, I would say it was like 70 bucks, which uh, probably wouldn't be the smartest to put that in. So I'm going to get this put on there and then I'll get you guys set up and we will see if the spark comes back. Fingers crossed. Let's see if this one works. Cleaned it up a little bit uh, before we put it on. There's still some 
little crevices in there, but that looks much better than it was before. So you didn't think I was gonna not do that, right? Okay, let's get it put on. All right, I got that all buttoned back up, as I love to say. And now, try this again. And a uh, little orange flicker right in that, in that cylinder. Cut some lights off. Yep, that didn't help. All right, little orange flicker. Where are you, orange flicker? And there we go. Cool. I am half tempted. I'm half tempted. Half. Not full. To just fill it up and see what happens. All right, I'll meet, I'll meet in the middle. So it's either just go with what's in there or take the carb off and clean it. I'm going to cut it down the middle. I'm going to crack that float bowl and put a little bit of, uh, the tank is empty. Whatever gas is in there is in the float bowl. If it hasn't been drained properly, I don't know if it has or not. I'm going to hold a paper towel under there, crack the float bowl up and see what color comes out of there. And if the fuel looks decent, I might just fill it up and, and send it. Just kind of get this mess out of the way. Remember that gasket was not very stable. Half inch, I think it's a half inch. And it is a half inch. All right, we got our paper towel. Let's see what that looks like. It's okay. It really does not look that bad. I just did that the first time. Chris, you stupid idiot. So, uh, all right, while I have that sitting like that, I am just going to run and flush out this fuel system. I'll show you the gas. It's now going to mix with the good gas, so it, it should lighten it up a little bit. The gas that was in there was not bad. I don't want to say it was good, but it was, it was not bad. I've definitely seen much, much worse. So that is good to know that most of the time it's in reverse. It's not a spark issue, it's a fuel issue. Here, I'll give you, I'll give you just a preview. So again, it's definitely not the best, it's definitely not the worst. I'm gonna let that kind of pee out for a minute. All right guys, I got that fuel all drained out of there. I kind of wiped the float bowl out a little bit. Not a whole lot of dirt. Let it drain all the way out after dumping that good fuel in there. Kind of blew some air through the through the tank just to push out whatever else was left. Put the float bowl back on. I'm not going to take the carburetor off right now. We'll get it fired up. I'm fairly confident it'll fire up at this point based on what I've seen and if we need to cut back into that we can but the fuel didn't look bad. Didn't smell bad. Definitely have smelled worse. Might just run like a little sea foam through the tank just to get up in there, but it's not the end of the world if we got to take that off. I just, I'm just going to avoid it. I'm, the anticipation is killing me of this firing up and coming back to life. So we'll get all that on and we'll get it fired up and uh, see how it sounds. Guys, one other thing. I can't make this up. I promise. This gasket officially failed. It Probably will still work if I put it back on there, but I noticed that it was hanging on by a thread before, and the more times you take this off and put it on, the more it, the more it messes with the gaskets. So I checked in my little pile, and I, in a bag, I had this guy, which is the exact gasket for this machine, and what better of a use that it would be to put this to than this. You gotta be kidding me. 
This is just unbelievable. So I'm gonna put that on there and I'm not gonna feel bad about it whatsoever because I didn't think I would ever get to use this gasket again, but you know, that's just me being dramatic. So uh, let me get this old gasket back off of there and, uh, and we're gonna carry on. All right, last thing, we're gonna get some gas in here. I will check for leaks, just make sure everything is holding up in there. And after just a couple seconds of that, All right, just make sure nothing's peeing out from under there. And so far, so good. Yep, we're good. Okay, I think we're ready. Fire in the hole. This has turned into a beautiful project. The, uh, what did I do? What did I do off camera that I always do off camera and never show on camera for some reason? Sorry about that. I added a little bit of sea foam to the gas tank. I'll kind of show you my, my usual uh, routine. So usually on this kind of stuff, I'll add a little bit of the additive of sea foam to the tank. Sometimes I'll put this in the actual crankcase, just a, I think this is one ounce per one gallon of gas. And then to the crankcase, it's one ounce per quart of seafoam to directly to the oil in the crankcase. I did not put this in the crankcase this time. I used some Lucas heavy duty oil stabilizer. Um, this is 20%. So I think the ratio on this is one quart per every five quarts. So if it's a five quart tank, you'd put one of these and then uh, four quarts of oil. So 20% is the percentage on that. And another plug for the Seafoam team. Um, I did the, you know, let the engine heat up a little bit. And once it got to operating temperature, you just take the air, air filter off and then you just hammer inside of the carb with this until it stalls out. Let it hot soak for about five minutes and you start it up and all the white smoke and petroleum and everything burns off and with the carbon as well. So none of these are paid sponsors, but I love all these products. So I am happy to share. That's my, that's my typical engine cleaning regiment. What's left, what I'm going to do, it's pretty clean already. I might just give it like a quick air compressor, you know, just a, just a blow off. There is a, a cover that I did take off that goes right there that I'll put that back on, sharpen the blade and uh, that'll pretty much do it. I'm excited. This is a really cool piece. I'm really happy for, for Fred, the guy who I got it from, I, I think this is gonna be a really awesome and great piece for him. Really appreciate you guys hanging out and uh, and tinkering with this with me. Really cool, this is, I think this is the first video on this channel that I've dealt with a spark issue out of about, out of about 15 so far. I think it's about the 15th one or, or you know, who's counting. Uh, yeah, usually spark issues are a little bit more complicated on these machines. They're not, you know, there's only a couple of things. When you have a wiring harness and relays and 
all of that and seat safety switches and neutral switches, safety switches and all that, that gets complicated. So on these losing spark, it's not as big of a deal. So if you'd like, follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, say what's up. Let me know what you're working on. I'm really curious, interested to know what you guys are working on, what you're struggling with. I mean, maybe you have a question. If, I, if there's something I can do to answer it, I'd be happy to. If you liked the video, hit that thumbs up button. I really appreciate it. Throw some comments down there. Let me know what you thought. Let me know if you guys have any suggestions for any other types of equipment that you'd be interested in, uh, in hammering on. And um, if you want to see more of this, if I've earned your subscription, I really appreciate it. And you know, that, that bell button is just next level status if I've earned that. So <laughs> take care guys. Thanks for hanging.